What's up, everybody? All two of you. Hey, thanks for joining in. So, I'm, uh, I don't know if I'm going to talk as much, or maybe I'll talk more than I did yesterday. Uh, I'm just going to go back to this project that I was working on yesterday, uh, this time-stretching thing, and I thought that this time-stretching library was going to have some sort of BPM that I could put in for it, uh, but it doesn't, so I'm going to need to do something else. So let's have a look here. Let me pop out my chat for anybody that wants to say hi. Put the chat to auto low latency as well. So hopefully this will be a little bit more real time than we've had in the past. I'm going to try it out today. So this is just really, <clears throat> it's just really casual, uh, casual video. It's not going to be formal. So I hope your expectations of this aren't too high. We'll make sure that our plugin hasn't done anything crazy since yesterday. Hey, what's up, Floria? Good, good to see you, man. Thanks for joining. So here we are. Just going to build this up. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> nice. Procrastination. Procrastination on a Friday isn't so bad. So I'm going to just test this out. Cool. So that still works. And let's see here. So we're going to expand this plugin a little bit. I'm not sure how uh, how this is going to go, but let's just try it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to implement some features on the time structure itself. So see if we can actually get the plugin to actually stretch and pitch in real time and attach some parameters for that. So let's just have a look at doing that. And I'm going to pull up the API here. So some of this I of course have done before. And what we will do is we will create audio processor value tree state parameter layout. So we're just going to create a function where we can upload our parameters. And we'll put this here. Layout. Then this is audio plugin processor. Create parameters. And then this needs to be a stood unique. Oh, no, stood vector. Stood unique. Pointer of, let's go back here. 
think it's ranged audio parameters that I need. Yes. Ranged audio parameter. We'll just call this params. And then at the end, we will return params.begin, params.end. all good so far. And here, I will make this create parameters. So this actually needs to be inside my params now. Params push back. This should all be able to go in here. Let's make sure that we are calling the correct constructor for audio parameter bool. So we've got parameter, got a name, got a default value. Then we have all this stuff that we don't need, which is cool. So that's fine. Okay. Um, is it too small for you? Shall I, shall I make it a little bit bigger? How's that? Is that better? Somebody was saying that the code wasn't, uh, wasn't big enough. That should be better. So, okay, and so now let's see. So we need to make a time ratio parameter and a set pitch scale parameter. So I'm not sure what range these need to be in. Um, so, okay. So let's just pick some arbitrary numbers to go. Hey, what's going on, Michael? Yeah, thanks for tuning in. <clears throat> I was saying to uh, everybody else earlier that this is going to be a little bit more casual than what I was doing yesterday. I mean, yesterday was pretty casual as well. But uh, what I'm looking at doing is I want to create some parameters for the time shifting and, and pitch shifting that we implemented yesterday. And then I'm going to try and implement some type of BPM detector from the same creator of rubber band uh, to try to detect the BPM. And if I'm really fancy, I don't know I don't know how long I'm going to make this live stream. I probably won't do a three and a half hour one like I did yesterday. But uh, if I can get really fancy, what, I what I've dreamt about doing or, or, or imagined doing was being able to have a look at a target BPM and being able to adjust the time stretching to match the target BPM. So we take the BPM of what the track is currently. And then we have a target BPM and then we have to apply some sort of ratio in our time stretching to actually make our track that BPM. I don't know if I'm going to get to that though today. If we're lucky, we might be able to get the, uh, the BPM detector, hopefully to actually, uh, implement a little bit easier than we did yesterday. Hey, Martin, welcome back. Thanks for joining again. So, uh, so let's do audio parameter float. So we're just implementing some, some parameters here where we can hopefully control the time and pitch of 
the actual plugin and hopefully it, it won't break or that I haven't, uh, I'm sure that there are some ways that this could be optimized, but hopefully I can just do a hack, a hack of it, a little prototype of it. And, uh, I can optimize down the road without it sounding terrible. So this looks like a good constructor. I always, I prefer the shorter, simpler version of this. So here we go. And this will be called, let's call it time, time ratio. I always get the parameter ID and the parameter name mixed up. Like what's, what's the, what's the standard on how these are supposed to be written? A lot of times I just do them the same. I think one's supposed to be all caps, one's supposed to be lowercase. Uh, so let's make the minimum value 0 0.1 maybe. And we'll make the maximum value Um, let's make it two, I don't know. And the default value of course will be one. And do I have an extra parentheses in there? I think I do. Okay. And then yeah. Uh, so Michael says that he thinks that, uh, the parameter ID and the parameter name, uh, one is machine readable and then one's the human, uh, the human one. So what, so the question is, which one is supposed to be the one with the space? The first, the ID or the name? So I guess the ID would be one, one word, no spaces. That seems, that seems sensible. If it's the reverse of that, just let me know. Ah, uh, it's the name. Okay, so, so this, so it needs to be like this. Okay, great. So, params, is that, is that right, Mike? Let me know if that's, uh, if that's the right way. Make unique. And then this will be an audio parameter float as well. <clears throat> then we will call this pitch ratio. Pitch ratio needs to be a string. And I don't know if these are useful at all, but Hopefully, hopefully they won't completely break up our, our plugin. So, okay, great. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to do a audio processor value tree state listener to listen for changes in the value tree and let us know accordingly if we need to make any changes. So uh, audio processor value. Also, uh, it's the first one that should have the uh, no spaces. OK. Okay, so it's the f so it's actually the reverse. So that that makes more sense to me actually. So time ratio and pitch ratio should be one word and these should be two words. Um great. So now <clears throat> we want to so you would so if I remember correctly, the name shows up in the doll, so you would have caps and a space. So, okay, so let's go back. 
Yeah, that I think I think I remember. Uh, I think I remember it being like this as well. So we'll try pitch ratio. Okay, so now we need an audio processor value tree state listener so we can listen for when a parameter actually gets changed and <clears throat> if the user makes a change in their parameter in one of the controls then we can signal that we need to update our process so what we'll do is make our audio processor an audio processor value tree state listener. We will make this public. Don't think it actually even needs to be public, it should probably be private, but this is fine. And now we will have a private function parameter changed and we will call that here and then we will create a function um, so this is a question that happened the other day, actually, on the <clears throat> in one of my videos where uh, somebody was asking. So normally what I do is I make a separate update function that when the parameter is changed, I call update, uh, I call update and then update updates the parameters. And somebody said, well, why don't you just call it directly in parameter changed? That kind of makes sense. I guess I guess the reason for that is that uh, this to me signify it, if I'm reading the code, I feel that it if I put a flag in here and it says needs to update and I put that to true that that logically just shows up cleaner for me in the code i don't know let's let's try to do it the way that i normally do it and then let's see if that um if that can be cleaned up so we will make a bull m needs to update i'll set that to false And then uh, M needs to update equals true. And then, oh, I need to mark this override. What did I just do there? Got rid of my. Okay, so now I need to have this void update function. And then we will just update this over here. So I will put this here. Void audio player plugin audio processor update. And then I would say, so now we need to then update the time ratio and pitch ratio. I don't think we, that we need to update play. Um, so auto time ratio equals um, APVTS or what did, what did I call my audio processor by tree state? params probably shouldn't call that params and params twice i mean i know it's in two different scopes but i'm just going to change that so we don't 
so we don't get those mixed up. APVTS. Go back down here. Get raw parameter value. And then this is going to be time ratio. And then what we will do is, oops, this needs to be. Okay, so this, this all needs to go into update, I think. Yeah, I could probably put all this in update eventually. I don't want to try to multi, I don't want to try to multi-thread what I'm doing mentally here too much here. So we've got um, set time ratio, and then this is time ratio get. And I think I need to dereference this as well. Is that right? What you do is you just keep just keep uh, keep doing it till it doesn't. Oh, load. Sorry, it's load, not get. And then this needs to be dereferenced. I think. I'm just gonna build it. Okay, why has it failed? Um, so what's it say here? No member main params. Oh, oh, okay. So this is, uh, APVTS. I need to update the name here in my, um, in my button attachment. Okay. So that worked. So that's fine. So we can go back here and finish. Oh no. Xcode's been doing something really weird with me lately where sometimes if I just stop a build right after I've right after I've like hit build just to make sure it built successfully, it actually kind of freezes. So it's really weird, but no matter what we'll do is we will just open it up from the producer again and we're back in business. So okay, so now we got we're going to update our time ratio and then we can do this with the pitch ratio, APVTS, get raw parameter value, pitch ratio, and then we will set this, set pitch okay and then this will be pitch ratio load <laughs> I know it's really annoying isn't it that that thing where it freezes you're typing you're typing faster than the IDE can handle it uh, so let's see. <sighs> I don't want to meddle with this too much. So let's see here. So this is checking. This is checking every callback. I don't know if I want. But I'm, I'm going to I'm going to take a chance here and put this in update. As is, I think I think it's fine, but yeah. So let's see. Hmm. That's fine. That's fine for now. Um, yep, 
that that works. That I feel I feel that that is fine. And then what we need to do is we need to set needs to update equals false. So this will trigger the <clears throat> value tree state. And what I'll do is I'll put this up here. If M needs to update, then update. And that feels fine. And let's see here. I feel like all of this needs to be <clears throat> its own its own thing. Feels like this needs to go out into its own function. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, so <clears throat> pardon me. So this will be something called up um time stretch buffer. Um, just trying to think of what the sensible name for this would be. Apply time stretch. This will need to take in the buffer. And then what I will do is I will make this a private function in here apply time stretch and then this needs to take an audio buffer of type float and this is the buffer and now we just need to write it down here void all of this apply time stretch and then we will throw all this in here and let so this this could go back out to where it was so that's fine apply time stretch. So now we just want to make sure this is actually everything is in scope. We aren't doing anything um, strange. So apply time stretch and that's what it's called. So where did my process block go? Ah, this is what's messing me up, is that I'm seeing lines on all these other functions, but I'm not seeing it here. So, there we go. Oh, we need an extra slash. There we go. And let's have a look here. So that looks much, much neater to me now. And... I'm going to just build it. I'm going to build it, make sure that it actually works the way that it was working before. And then we can start looking at doing some other stuff. So bring in our song. So this song is actually a song I produced a long time ago. It's a rock song. <laughs> uh, okay, interesting. Not hearing anything. Okay, so. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's let's have a look and see what's happened here. So we are getting our we are getting our buffer. So it's taken in the buffer. Samples available. It's less than output buffer. 
and we are calling get next audio block and that so why isn't that working so let's see so is it so what I'm going to do for a moment is I'm going to Ah, uh, I have a feeling. Oh, because when you hit play, so I think it has to do with this. Okay, let me just bring this back out for a moment. I can straighten this out. I can straighten this out a bit later. Um... So let's just try this. Yeah, it's not going to trigger update. So I think that's why it wasn't actually playing. Okay, great. So it so it actually works. I'm just going to leave that there for now. And um, I can come back to it a little bit later. So... Okay, so now let's do, let's add some controls. So let's make some, let's make some sliders. Uh, so we got slider, um, pitch. So one will be M time slider. And then slider, M pitch slider. And then, if you can hear my dog, uh, she loves to snore during these live coding sessions. So, um, pitch slider. Uh, oh yeah, we need to make some attachments. Trying to remember if when you make the attachments, if it automatically, I know it gives it its default value, but I'm not sure if it gives it its, um, if it gives it its range as well. It'd be interesting to see. So we will add this here. So uh, one thing I've been a fan of lately is, use, is doing using, but I'm not gonna do it here because these are sliders. So, and there's only two of them. Audio processor value tree state slider attachment. And this will be um, time slider attachment. And then stood unique pointer audio processor value. And then this will be another slider attachment. And pitch slider attachment. Okay, and then we will say M time slider attachment equals stood make unique. Audio processor value tree state. I know that I should use using here, but I'm going to be stubborn and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it long for now. Um, and then this is slider attachment. So we just need to put our parameters here so we got the state that we want to control which is APV processor dot apvts and then we have time time ratio and then we have um what is it um oh 
and time slider. There we go. Then we need to add and make visible and time slider. I'm going to do the same thing for the pitch slider and pitch slider attachment. Stood make unique audio processor value tree state. And then this is the same sort of thing. Processor a PBTS pitch ratio and um, pitch slider. Yeah, that's not a bad idea at all. Uh, and the and the funny thing is that these these uh, attachments actually are gonna uh, change in Juice 6, I've been told. So, uh, so prepare to learn it all again. Uh, hey, what's going on, Sind Sindum? Thanks for joining us today. And so we got add and make visible, and we're going to make this the pitch slider. Oh yeah, okay, so I'm gonna change my bounds. I'm doing great, how are things going? Uh, so let's make it more on the X direction. So we'll make it 500 in the X direction. So I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to uh, go in the Y direction here because that's the way that my flex box is um, actually set up. And we need to make the, we need to set a slider type. So um, pitch slider, set slider style. Mm -hmm. And then this is slider, slider, slider style. We'll make this uh, linear vertical. We'll just do the same thing for the time slider. Actually, I'm going to make these linear horizontal. <laughs> Can you hear my uh, dog snoring? She's so funny. <laughs> she cracks me up. So let's just... I'm not quite sure how this is going to actually look when I add this, but... Now we'll make this um, 50 across and 25 down. I thought that was a single, single, single style bike. I'm not sure what you mean, Nitra. Uh, and this is going to be um time slider a single piston yeah i know <laughs> she cracks me up man she's she gives me laughs every day and you can see that uh my coding my coding uh convention has changed since i've done this last tutorial so i'll probably come back and actually change this at some point so we'll make the pitch slider there we go let's do these spaces keep everything consistent i'm a i'm really crazy about um about spaces and stuff so i'm i'm actually curious to see if the attachment gives our slider its ranges or not let's see 
Okay, so. Um, that's interesting. So let's so let's see what happens here. Oh, helps if I create a file here. Okay, so it's not doing anything. Um, sounds like it's playing faster than normal, which is strange. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to bring this back to 300. So, oh, I know what I need to do. I forgot to add it. And I, I forgot to add the audio pro processor uh, as a listener. So, uh, what is it? It's APVTS add listener at param. Nope. APVTS state add listener. And then this, I think. So, let's try this. Oh, so a value. Oh, so let's see here. I'm going to go back to the documentation. See, I thought I was going to be able to just hack this together. So, um, so audio processor value tree state. And we need to add the value audio processor value tree listener. There we go. So let's see here. So, so let's see here, listener. Add parameter listener. This is interesting. No, that's not what I want. Hmm. Add parameter listener. Attaches a callback to one of the parameters, which will be called when the parameter changes. So do I need to do this for every one? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, this is this is a little bit different than what the way that I normally do it. So so normally I do it like this. And if somebody knows the better way to do this, then you can uh, you can tell me. So normally I do value tree listener like this. And then So music AMG has a question. Yes, please ask. Ask away. So value tree, and then oh, I don't I don't want value tree. I want value tree listener. Listener, that's it. So value tree. So this is value tree property changed. This is normally the one that I use. Let's see if that will get rid of our error. Is there any chance I can start a forum? Can't use Discord as I have to use a VPN and Discord does not work with a VPN. 
Mm. I um I've thought about starting a forum before, but there's a reason that I haven't, which is that I thought that uh the juice forum the the juice forum answers a lot of the juice questions. So that's the reason why I've been reluctant to add another forum because a lot of people would be asking juice related questions on the forum, but if I would rather have people do that on the juice forum if they did that and that feels like I'm not kind of infringing on anybody else's uh ground and we have a and we have a great uh we have a great relationship as well. So um yeah KBR is cool. I mean yeah you can do KBR. Okay let me try this out. Yeah, so that looks like it works, but one thing that's strange is that it's playing faster than normal. That's interesting. It's not playing it's not playing at its normal speed. Not sure what to make of that. Yeah. Yeah, real time safe. Hmm. What that that what was real time safe? Yeah, maybe my sample rate. I don't. So I'm getting the sample rate. I think it could be possible. I. Th see the thing is is i think my sound card yeah i th i think my sound card is actually running at 48 48000 and that uh that's the reason why it's going faster um so i think my sound card is set at 48000 but i think Maybe this is going at 44,100. I don't want to mess with it too much because um, if I start messing with the sound card, then I have so many things that are routing through it. And I also have my, uh, my app that allows me to, uh, that allows me to circulate the audio called loopback as well. And that I feel that uh, if I start tinkering around with it too much, I might lose all the sound or something. So I don't want to mess with it, but I'm, fairly confident that if this was if it was not this situation and that if I didn't have all this stuff set up that it would uh that it would play fine. I think I just need to um reset my sample rate of something that uh that I'm actually playing through. Um but I will leave it as is for hope of not actually messing with it. So great. So that so that works. That's pretty cool. Um, so now that we've done that, I thought there's this BPM detector uh, library. So I need to figure out how to uh, actually uh, in this in this uh, app that I've been working on, I need to actually do a BPM detector, and then I need to actually do time stretching eventually. So I thought. Uh, I was going to start doing it today. And then I thought, well, why don't I just hit record and just do it for everybody to see. So, uh, so there's this, so if we go back to GitHub and then to this, um, this thing called, uh, this person's GitHub called breakfast Kwai which is a really interesting name. 
And uh, so he's the same person that made Rubber Band, the time stretching library that we've implemented. And there is this other thing called Mini BPM. I haven't actually even looked at the source code for this or anything, so I'm uh, so I'm just going to do what I did yesterday, which is I'm just going to clone it and I'm going to see if I can actually get it to work. I think this is going to be easier though. So we will just grab this and then, yeah, so juice is passing the sample rate into, uh, into prepare to play. Um, yeah, so it, it, I'm, I'm certain that it's actually just the way that I have my actual physical sound card um, configured. I'm sure of it. It's not, it's not like a juice problem or anything. Um, so where was I? Okay, so now I need to go to my terminal. Now I need to go to just gonna go to the actual this actual project so we're in juice audio programmer audio so we're in here oops I need to do I need to CD to there and then get clone this And now we have, now we have it in there. That's fine. And so let's do the README. Y'all probably can't see that. I'm gonna copy it into a text file so I can just make it bigger for everybody to see. Um, that that's actually not the actual terminal that uh that apple comes with that's actually a uh an app called iterm and where is my term where is my text edit so um yeah so that's called iterm uh it has more customizations that are available than uh, just your standard terminal. And it's uh, it's pretty cool. I haven't actually used any of the standard, I, I haven't done any of sort of customizations, but you could do like really cool little graphics and everything. So, um, okay, so great so michael so michael's here he's actually he's actually messed with this library before and it's that's great news because if i get if i get lost i might have to get him on a call and uh get him to get him to bail me out so uh so here we go so just add mini bpm.h and mini bpm.cpp to your code project c plus plus 98 so fun old school c plus plus here we go so i'm just going to minimize this just in case i get lost and so we need to include now we just need to look at our path which is going to be dot dot slash mini bpm slash source so dot dot slash mini bpm slash source slash and then i imagine that i just need to do mini bpm dot h okay so let's see if that builds Yeah, I've I've only done a couple libraries myself. So and then I and then I got stuck yesterday when I was trying to do it, and uh, luckily um, this developer from from Accusonus, uh, Maria, actually helped me out and helped me actually get it working. 
there were a couple of times where if I didn't have some help, I would have completely flopped, I think. Without, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I would have Googled and figured out the result eventually, but it might have been a little while. So, okay, so it looks like, so it looks like it, uh, it initializes fine. So now what we're going to do is we're actually just going to put this in another tab here. And this is where we're going to actually go and try to implement this thing. So it looks, okay, this is, I'm going to say this very, very cautiously. This looks quite simple to actually implement. Looks like it's only just a couple, a couple little functions actually. So this is, this is actually kind of cool. So, so first, so I don't know if we need to, so can I do just mini BPM, mini BPM, or does it have to be breakfast quai mini BPM? So let's try. I'm just trying to put this in a sensible place. This is starting to get a little bit crowded. Okay, so. Um, so the question is, should it be a pointer? Okay, so let me go back. I, I was actually, actually meant for this to be in, just in this separate tab, so. So yes, it should be a pointer so that we can call the sample rate at any, uh, when we actually create it. The sample rate has to be known at runtime. Can't, uh, we won't know the sample rate till the app is actually running. So we will do a std unique pointer, unique. Pointer of type breakfast quite mini what is it mini BPM BPM and then I'll just call this BPM maybe so let's just try that. Uh, so symbols not found. Okay. So, okay. So we got symbols not found and so the question is, does the CPP, okay, cool. So it looks, oh no. It includes mini BPM dot H. So what, so what file is it not? So what's it not seeing the destructor? Okay. What? Oh, is it mini BPM, mini BPM? Mm. So Okay, so that finds it, BPM, and then do I need to, let me just try to actually allocate this, BPM equals stood, make unique, breakfast quai mini BPM, and then arguments is just sample rate, I believe. I keep doing this where I keep messing up my tab where I'm supposed to keep the library open. So just takes a sample rate. So let's try that. I'm seeing a lot of comments happening in my peripheral vision. <laughs> so I, uh, so hopefully I'm doing this right. So it doesn't have a default. It doesn't have a default constructor. I thought it did. Right here. 
So that's the default constructor, right? Oh, I get what you're saying. Is that it has... Uh, so... The default constructor has no arcs. What do you mean? This is... Hold on. The default constructor is right here, right? And it has an argument of sample rate. Yeah, so there's 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 a linker error that's happening here. <laughs> Undefined symbols. <sighs> What's happening here? So symbols not found. So Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's so Michael is saying the default constructor in other languages where where its default is compiler generated. Yes, that it that happens in C++ as well. Um So the question is why is this not linking? Hmm. Okay. So there's something that there's something that I'm missing here. So I included I included it. Why is it not working? I'll do. I've noticed that the CPP is not here. What's up with that? What's going on there? But I shouldn't need to. Yeah, so the header has been included not the CPP. So what do I need to do there? Okay, I'm going to go with my intuition and I'm going to do this, which is that I'm going to I'm going to put this in here like this. Let's see if this works. No, that didn't work. Okay, so, hmm, okay, I'm just going to try one more thing here. Yes, that worked. Ha ha ha. Yeah, just needed, because it was, I, I put the, uh, I put the header file in there, but it didn't know. I didn't tell the I didn't tell the producer. I didn't tell <laughs> I didn't tell my source files what's the uh, what's the what's the correct term for it. I didn't tell it where that it had a CPP as well. So the header so the CPP knows about the H, but the H does not know about the CPP. Does that make sense? That makes sense, right? So that's why I had to include it in my source. So that's that's why. So okay, great. So now so now we're back in business. We had a scare and now we just need to actually Okay. I'm going to give my word that this tab is going to be the documentation tab and that I'm not going to mess with it here. So set the valid, so let, set the valid tempo. 
so set BPM range. We got get the current get the current range of valid temp tempi. Tempi is the plural of tempo. Um and so like let's just I guess let's just do that here. So we could just say BPM set BPM range and we will make it maybe 50 and and we'll make the the max maybe I don't know 200 oh. okay what's next so set beats per bar uh, so we could do that that's that's four BPM. Oh, hey, Dusty Tracks, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. Uh, set beats per bar. This one, this one's been going a lot smoother than yesterday. But um, yeah, okay. So, so Michael's helping out. Basically, you have your list of float samples, then process, then estimate tempo. Okay. So. So let's go down. So, okay, here we go. Supply a single block of audio for processing. The block may be of any length. Okay, so this, this looks cool. So we would want this to be before our, before our time stretcher, because we don't want to take the tempo of it after it's time stretched, or maybe we do sometimes, but... Uh, BPM process, so there will be um, auto read pointers equals, okay, so let's, okay, so the only problem here, the only problem here is that all of our, all of our stuff is actually uh, in apply time stretch encapsulated in time stretch uh, apply time stretch so I'm going to need to refactor this a little bit okay so um, so let's see here this is this is going to be an interesting, um, so here is where I'm actually taking the audio and I'm putting it into the temp buffer. So I guess what I could do is I could just take, so maybe I do want to do the, no, I guess it makes sense whether you're doing it before or whether you're doing it after. I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? So, so what I could do is I could actually go back up here. So let's go back. So, so we have, so we put our audio information into the buffer. So now what we could do is we could say auto read pointers equals get array. Uh, what was it? Buffer get array of read pointers. I'm going to try to do it the way that Marv told me uh, yesterday. Hopefully this, uh, this works. And then, was it BPM process? And then read pointers, num samples. And then what's the next step, Mike? Then estimate tempo. Okay, so cannot cannot initialize a parameter of can I do this? Let's 
Does that work? Holy cow. That was, that was, I gotta admit, that was kind of a guess. So it's, it's a pointer pointer. And then I just, I guess just, um, dereferences, you know, dereferencing one of those pointers gives you one point, uh, a pointer. So that, that makes sense. So now what is estimate tempo? So return the estimated tempo and BPM in the sequence. Okay. The tempo cannot be estimated. So this question is, does this, should this be in the audio callback? I feel like, I don't feel like it needs to, I don't feel like it needs to be in the audio callback itself. Uh, I'm going to put this in a timer. And I mean, I'm sure that I, yeah. Yeah. So public timer and then we need a timer callback um so where is that so void uh, timer callback override hey Bogdan how's it going hey Scott thanks for joining oh man all the experts are coming in so now I'm this is the time for me to wrap it up now <laughs> so this is good though this is good that uh, I feel I feel a bit of pressure but it's all right. So here we go. We could just do, we're going to just try to do a debug BPM estimate tempo and see if that comes out. And then we need to do a start timer. <laughs> I know, but you basically built your own. <laughs> You've helped build dreams. That's uh that's way lower level than this. And then we could do stop timer. So now we're just going to try to uh, console out the tempo. So the tempo should be, I think, 130 BPM. So let's see what happens. So we should probably make it where it only estimates the tempo if there's actually a file in there. I mean, that's an optimization that's... Ha! It looks like it works. Look at that. Ha ha ha. How crazy is that? It's those, sim it's those simple things in life that, uh, that I love. Uh, I got a crash on there. I'm not going to worry about that. This is just a toy, so... Okay, so... So now let's, let's try to, uh, let's try to manipulate it. Let's see if it, let's see if the tempo actually goes with the, um, with the tempo manipulation here. Ha ha, it actually works. Well, sort of. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. How cool is that? Okay, so now let's try to get that about. Let's let's try to get that into like a little a little label in our in our uh, editor, right? So we will say label. 
and then this would be M BPM. And then this will be, um, so, so what I need to do is I need to store this. So I'm just thinking about multiple things at the same time. So M BPM label. And then over here, I need to have a public member string and I will call this, uh, I don't want to call it BPM, so, uh, so current BPM. And we will do that. And then we will go into our processor and we will say current B BPM equals like that. Oh, that's going to, uh, what was it? STD uh, stood to string or something like that. Stood to string. Yeah. So let's do this. And that should, oh, but that's going to give us that's going to give us a stood string. It's not going to give us a juice string, which is, oh, I think I could do this to string. Oh, how does it, how does that? Okay. So I have a stood string and I need to, oh, I, I think it should be something like this. St string from, from, Ah, uh, maybe I should just look at the API, huh? Rather than just guessing. So let's go back here. And let's go string, string class. And then this should go stud string. So there we go. So just string. So this should be a winner. Yeah, that looks right. And then what we will do is, so let's do this label business. So can I just, can I just uh, call the arguments here? So we got the name of what we're going to call the label BPM. And then thing is, is that processor is below this. So I could call the processor first. Actually, I'm going to do this in an initializer list. So we'll just keep this like this. Then we will go to our initializer list. This needs to go before. Uh, okay. So, this needs to go after processor. And then we go M B P M label. And then it's the name of the label BPM. And then this will be processor um, current BPM. Then we need to add and make it visible. Um, oh yeah, you're great. That's a great point. Uh, that I don't need the I don't need to make this into a string anymore. I don't think. So thank you, Dusty Tracks, for the tip. So that should be fine now. And then we'll add and make visible. And then this is going to be uh, um, BPM label. Then we will put this down here, flex box items add. I don't really use flex box anymore because I just use this other one called set bounds relative, but this works. 
uh, 50, so we'll just make all these the same, Let's see if that works. And then in our <clears throat> timer callback, can I call, ooh, this is, hmm, I can't call repaint from the processor. This is a, okay, so, that's okay, though. Um, what I can do is I will make a little function here called void. Oh, needs to be public. Um, where, let's see here. So we will call this void get current. BPM and then I'll just put this in here. Get current BPM and then this needs to return a const string reference. Then we will do return that yes mini bpm what's up rob how's it going and then this will be a uh, string const string reference get current bpm and then i can get rid actually i'm going to take this because this is going to actually go over to my editor and that's where oh i've got a timer in there haha uh -huh. so i don't need this timer anymore okay and then in editor.cpp we have our timer callback and then we will say mbpm label dot set text. And then this will be processor get current BPM. And then don't send notification. Oh, from, I, I forgot to delete a comma. Oh, yep, yeah, you're right. Good catch. Nice one, Mike. Did I do all that right? Uh, start timer hurts, so that can go away. And then stop timer goes away as well. Build failed. Okay, so. Get current BPM. Oh, got a semicolon. Returning reference to temporary, returning reference to temporary object. So const string, so that doesn't need to be a reference anymore. And here we go. Let's see if anything interesting happens here. So there it is. Uh, it's not much, but <laughs> hopefully it, uh, nice. Hey, it works. I like it. I like it. So yeah, nice. This is cool. This is really cool. Uh, I think that's a good time to end it and we can, we can end on a winning streak here. Uh, so that so that went much smoother than yesterday. Maybe maybe the last thing I could do is just some refactoring, just to show people that I know relatively a few things about. I mean, there's not much that really needs to. 
mean, this could probably be, I'll probably just take this and process or estimate BPM buffer. And then we will do void estimate BPM audio buffer float and buffer. Should this be const? No, it's fine. I don't want to try to start acting. I don't want to try to get too, uh, too clever here. So now we got void audio, all this stuff, estimate BPM and all this. And I feel like this should be const. Right, because we don't need to change it. Is that right? No. Oh, then semicolon. Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's cost because we don't actually need to change any information. We're just reading the information. Okay. And then hopefully when I play audio through it, it doesn't hmm that should be quicker when I speed it up uh, also a ring buffer, I see that there's some optimizations that could be, that could be, uh, made there. So, yeah, I think that there's, I think that it works. There could be some, uh, <laughs> now beat detection. Yeah. Nice. Um, I think, I think there could be some optimizations for sure. So we see that. If we move this, so I feel that, uh, so like I could tell as well that this like sticks as well, if I'm moving it too quickly. Uh, so probably a linear, uh, a linear smooth value would probably do better than just a regular float slider, but I'll just leave it as is because I feel like, okay, I've got it working. It actually works, uh, in a basic sense and that, uh, it's better to do that rather than leave you with something where we can't figure it out at the end. So, um, so that's good. It's about seven 30 here and we've been going for about an hour and a half. So I think it's a good time for us to, uh, conclude and, uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, I think that's it. So I'm going to sign off now and thank you. Thank you to everybody that tuned in and, um, yeah, let's, uh, Let's stay in touch. And if you're not on the community yet, uh, join us over at the audioprogrammer.com forward slash community uh, and uh, hang out with us, ask questions. And I will end the stream there. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time.